I appreciate you coming in for our meeting. Karen Moore um, and her team from the Office of Funding and Operations are here to help us work through some processes and procedures. They've been helping you from some of you've seen many people in her team around campus trying to help us work out um, some details with travel and expenses and, and figuring out how that stuff works. So she's going to talk to you a little bit about that and Budget Director in the Division of Budget and Financial Management at the Department of Education. Um, so I'm very So I know that sometimes, I know that sometimes, oh. Stop, please, Marie. I know that sometimes the processes and procedures in Frankfurt don't always filter down to you all in the schools. Um, as you all, or many of you all are aware, there has been a transition um, in the fiscal officer role here at the department, or here at the school. Um, Zach Whitaker, if you haven't met Zach, you need to. Um, he's going to be fulfilling that role for you all um, in the um, interim. Um, so we wanted to come down and talk to you guys a little bit today about um, the, just the concept of um, a school um, that is state operated. Um, as all of you all know, you all are state government entity. You're a part of the Department of Education. So unfortunately, there are a lot of state government rules and regulations that we have to follow. Um, also, you're an independent school that we like to treat as a school district. We like to give you all that ability to um, address the needs on your own campus, um, that, you know, the things that you all know is best. Um, we definitely don't want to be an obstruction. Um, we definitely don't want to um, be a hurdle that you feel like you have to get over every time you want to try to accomplish something. We are here to try to guide you so that the things that you need can be procured, um, funds can be received in a quick and timely manner so that you can, you can do what you need to do to service your students because I think that's why every single one of you are in this room. That's why um, all of us at KBE are in that building in Frankfurt. So I brought, my, I brought a little team with me today. Um, we plan on being here again next Friday. Um, today we just want to talk some high level and ask some questions to you all. Um, let me introduce who I've got. I've got Terry Mason. Terry Mason is our budget branch manager. Uh, she handles all things money. So if it's got a dollar sign associated with it, she's your girl. She and um, Zach and Shannon will be working closely um, uh, on budgets for the school. Um, also with us today is Monica Rains. Monica Rains is our travel guru at the department. Um, if you travel for your work here at KSD and you want to be reimbursed, which you rightfully should be, you're going to send your travel information to Monica. She's here today to walk you through. And she can also be here next Friday to do some one-on-one -on -one work with anyone that's... If, do we have any outreach folks here? Okay, so maybe next week we can, we can see if, it, if, if we can get some outreach folks in because I know they're the, the majority of their work is traveling. Um, also have Marshall Smith. Marshall Smith is in our um, Division of District Support Services. And Marshall and his team, um, they work um, with local school districts um, on their audits, um, looking at the way that they spend their money um, and, and uh, the processes that they follow. With him on his team is Kelly Young, and Kelly will be assisting Marshall and assisting all of us as we start talking about um, fiscal matters moving forward. So, the, so introductions. I know you. A lot of you have probably talked to Shara Wiley. Um, Shara has been um, taking the role of trying to get things caught up um, in the fiscal world um, in the interim until we were lucky enough to get Zach in that position. So Shara has been probably talking to some of you all about your immediate needs. What we would like to do is address the immediate, which I think we've done, and then lay the groundwork for you all so that you all can move forward and you don't have to worry about this. I don't want you all to all be procurement experts because you don't need to be because that's what's in Frankfurt. I want you all to say, I need this, and I want you to have just enough knowledge of the process so that you can start that conversation and get what you need. 
and we can provide. We are your central office, and we'll procure it. We'll do all of that work, and you, you don't have to be an expert, but we have to start it out the right way. Um, I know that there's also, um, other than general funds, which, you know, general funds are monies that are received from the General Assembly. Those are monies that we monitor through EMARS, which is the state accounting system. But then you all also have what's called student activity accounts. So could I just see a show of hands as who has a student activity account? That is, I'm sorry, that is money that you may collect from your students or donations for something if your particular area is outreach or um, student living or it's money that you would actually collect and, and bring to the fiscal officer to deposit. So I don't have anybody here that has a student activity. I did have a question to talk about. I did use a local account, and that's what we used to put that in, but I was told that that didn't follow Redbook, and so I was told we couldn't use that anymore. Okay, so does anybody have a local account? Maybe that's the right word. Okay. Safe Swap is not here, but FSA, okay. yes. program, yes. has some different accounts. Okay, so there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, and I'm just going to be fully transparent, there's a lot of money sitting in a local bank. And that money has been collected um, in different ways and um, under different sub-accounts that are listed um, as a student activity. So a student activity fund, the purpose of that is you're going to take a field trip. You've got 10 kids you're going to take. It's going to cost each of them $10. They give you their $10. You collect it. You take it to Zach. Zach deposits it. And then when you take your field trip, he writes you a check and you take the $100 and you go spend it. That's the purpose of a student activity fund. The money comes in, it's a holding place, then you spend it. It's not a savings account, it's not a place to build up money. So we really, um, we, we've, we really need to address that. And if any of you all, after this, kind of think, well, maybe I do have something, um, um, just reach out and we can, we can talk through it because we need, to, we need to figure out a way to, to start budgeting that money because there's quite a bit of money sitting there. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, just a little confused. We, <coughs> the, um... Hey, you're talking. Oh, sorry. Um, our kids don't typically, like, pay for field trips. Okay. So, maybe that's why none of us have, I mean, you didn't know about this. And I'm saying field trips, maybe that's not the right... All right, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. We're just all very shocked. Yeah. <laughs> have any of you ever collected money and taken it? No. Okay. Never. Okay. I think for the most part here. Okay. Um, we do like sports. Uh huh. Like the sports will have local accounts, uh, FFA, AG, because they sell their hay and then use it for student functions and, and activities and things like that. Um, Concessions, when we used to do concessions, at, uh, that was all done with Redbook. Um, okay. Uh, so who owns those accounts? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> that, all, all we've ever been told is that's Redbook. Okay. And it's usually managed by the fiscal office. Okay. And that's all we know. So that's something we need to... Yes, ma'am. <laughs> The, the only process that we've tried through is the DPR process in order to request items or materials for our classroom. And it was documents that we were taught to fill out. Uh -huh. There were there's never money exchanged between teachers. Mm -hmm. We're never told if we're allotted anything on that DPR and on that list. There is a place to check mark where your like what area or department it's in. Okay. And then there are some specifics that we were asked to fill out. Okay. But as far as where that money comes from, where it's going, or anything like that, we've never been involved in that as teachers. Okay. Just the explanation process. It's always just been, you know. Okay. It, there Virtual. used to be some mm -hmm. like allocations of classroom spending a long time ago, but that okay. has changed over the years. Okay. So we really do not have any idea? Well, that was my next question. Okay. How many people knew? How many people know how much money they have? Yeah. Like, we I'm know. Okay. Okay. 
quick. Yeah, you have classroom allocations until COVID, and that just magically was going to be. Okay. Yeah. And Crystal. I don't know where it is. Okay. Okay. And you've got some federal ID and principal funds. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I guess my next question is, do you want to know? Sure. I, you know, I, yes, ma'am. I think most of us. Pass the microphone around. Thank you, sir. Is everybody I think actually the sad part about it is when we have done DPRs in the past, mm -hmm. I have one now that we did at the end of last year. I was told it was approved. It still hasn't happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, then what do you do? I understand. And I've asked several people, and I know I have people above me that have asked as well. Right. Right. And they asked, and it's Frustrated. like if it's approved, yeah. and it's a it's a tech thing. So all you have to do is go on and say yes, sent, done. Right. And it would have arrived that fast. And we asked for it in May. I understand. And I apologize for the level of frustration that, that must yes, give. Yes, it is. Thank you. So, so yes, ma'am. So we quit. We quit asking. Yeah. <laughs> so if you looked back probably five years ago, you would see a lot of global funds. And elementary, not as many. I can tell you middle school student council used to have one. And they, um, SVG used to have one. SVG was responsible for um, setting up the school dances and so paying for the items that involved sometimes paying for a DJ, some, you know, food, different things at the dance. Um, and so that came out of their budget. Um, a long time ago, there used to be like a portion of student fees or something that went into that. We also used to have vending machines on campus, right. and that money went to SVG. And then they gave a small portion to the middle school student council. We also used to have local funds for each class in high school. In other words, the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Yes. They're fundraising, earning things towards their prom and senior trip yep. and those kinds of things. However, I think we've seen those. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were told that that was being restructured in high school, and so there was no longer going to be a separate account for each class, okay. and there would be an educational junior senior trip each year to like Washington D.C. or you know different places that have educational value. It's not just hey, let's go hang out at the beach. So I think that's part of why we have so much confusion on our end because you're asking really simple questions, going these people should know what we're talking no, about, no, no, and it not. used to be a thing. Um, but when it got restructured, none of that was then, um, it wasn't very transparent for okay. the staff. Like, so we don't know. Okay, okay. That's Things helpful. Things happened above our heads that did not trickle back. Okay, gotcha. I understand that completely. Um, so here's what I, here's, here's what, while we're here. I think, I think you all are, are, are grasping very well while we're here because we want to change that, right? We want to change that. And, and, the first thing that I want to say to you all is there's been this misconception of Frankfurt that Frankfurt's going to come in, we're going to take your money. Um, Frankfurt, we're not going to, we're not, we are here to support you. We are here to give you the tools to do what you need to do for your students. That's why we're here. We don't want your money. <laughs> we really don't. Terry's got plenty of money in this budget, but she doesn't need KSD's money. KSD needs her own money. So we are here to give you all those preliminary tools so that that guy can help you do what you need to do. Okay? There's when you say DPR process, there's two DPR processes. Okay? K it, KSD has a DPR process, and I'm assuming, is that electronic? Yes. yes. Okay, so it's a program, and you go in and you fill in an Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Okay, and then it routes somewhere. Mm -hmm. You hit a button, it routes to your supervisor. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so when it routes to your supervisor, when, when you fill it out, do you say how what money you want to spend? Yes. Okay, yes. and so... Okay, and when you say what money do you use an accounting template? Do you use what do you how do you designate the, the money? Um, 
it's just a list, of, like an itemized list. Okay. And then that's how we have like, the cost of material. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually have other emails. <laughs> okay. <more. laughs> okay. We have no questions back here, Zach, or comments. So we have a DPR template, like something like something Excel. Like that, yes. We fill that out, but there's also a, a Google form that we do that's okay. part of our process. So okay. from that, there's a list of things that we can check. Okay. Like like where we think yeah. categories, where okay. we think it comes from. Okay. We try to get clarification that for that before. Okay. And then like the um, the rationale <coughs> and all that stuff too is also put on that form as well. Then it goes straight to our super immediate okay. supervisor. Okay. Okay. And then from that, if there's another person, it goes above that. So typically the principal. Uh -huh. And then after that, then it went to our financial officer. <clears throat> okay. Perfect. And then they put it into your all right yeah. system. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. we have we have a we have a KDE DPR system, right? Because you don't just need one; you need two. Um, and basically, <laughs> basically that that information. Then the fiscal person, mm -hmm. and we have those people all scattered throughout the department as well. Because you know we have other offices besides special education, early learning. We have teaching and learning. We have career and technical ed. We have um, educator licensure and effectiveness. We have finance and operations. So we have all these other offices, and they have folks just like a fiscal person. They take that information from somebody that says, hey, I need this. They enter it into the DPR, KBE DPR process or system, and it goes through and gets the appropriate approvals at KBE. That's when we know, that's when we say, this DPR is approved, you may order. Okay? Now, I don't know that that information then here comes down to you to place your order or if the fiscal officer was placing your orders. It's changed. Okay, so I, I built the DPR system. Great. Okay. Um, Ready. Well, no, no, that's so before, before I built the system, it yeah. was all emails. Yes. And they would get lost, they would get, you know, yeah. whatever. Or, so uh, the two finance officers ago, she asked me to put this thing and with her, we built this, we built what we have now. Right. Um, so yes, it goes through, it is approved by the department manager, and then it's approved mm -hmm. by the principal, and then by the finance officer. Great. The finance officer then takes the information that comes to them, uh -huh. puts it into EMARS, it goes through the system, and it comes back. Whenever it comes back, the finance person here uh -huh. puts, the, puts Katie's decision into our system. That lets them know that it's been approved. Okay. At that point, it, it, nothing else automatically happens. Okay. So, okay. like for me, because I'm a director, I would, I was, I was sent the POs, and I would send those to my vendors, and I would, I would do, I would do my own order. Okay. I don't think teachers order their own. It was usually done by whoever has the pro cards, because a lot of what you all purchase is like online purchases, like Amazon or different places that use like credit cards. Um, so this was purchased that way. Okay. Anything that was able to have a PO was then that then our finance person would send the okay. PO. Okay. Okay. Helpful. Thank you. So so when Rick's got a question back there. So so when when I, everything that makes perfect that all makes perfect sense. Now now when when the KSD DPR goes to Zach, what Zach's going to do is he's going to put it into the KDE DPR system. It's going to route through the approvals there because you have a director, Shannon Sparkman. Shannon has leadership. It's going to go through the approvals, which it sounds ominous, but it takes half a day. Wow. Okay? Wow. <laughs> you go through the processes and then then Zach is going to say, I've got an approved DPR because the last stop is my shop. Okay? And what happens is when Zach selects the category, it's either going to route it to Shara, who she's the fin accounting and finance person, or it's going to route it to Raven Miller, who's my procurement person. Okay? Because some things, if it's a commodity, it has to be procured. Okay? If you're asking to pay a stipend to somebody, you're going to go this route, or registration, you're going to go this route. In those categories, route it. Then my folks know what, what you need 
You might need an SPR1. These are letters that you all don't know and you shouldn't know. Oh, we know. Oh, we know. Yeah, we love them too. <laughs> so, so that's the way the process works. You all get your approved EPR, send it to Zach. Zach puts it in our system. He gets the approval. He sends it back to you all by checking the box, right? And then, and then Zach would either order the merchandise. Um, because what we're seeing a lot of is we're seeing a lot of you all have you all going out and buying stuff. Exactly. Yep. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that's not the way it needs to go. Rick, you got a question? Well, for clarification, I think one of the things that's confusing to all of us is when we go on there and do a DPR, when we get to a certain part of it, it's asking you which account that it's going to come out yes. of. We don't always know which account. Okay. And I think that there have been times like, okay, maybe I'm doing operations or I'm doing housekeeping, I'm doing maintenance. I don't know whether it's D803 or whether I it's you. doing the other. I understand. And, okay. I think at that point, two finance officers ago, <laughs> yeah. she took care of the, uh, the ordering for everybody. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. The next one that came in, it became our... our responsibility to do it herself. Okay. We were all fine with that, or at least I was. Okay, then it changed again. Okay. So I think that we got confused in the process sure. because it's changed. It's changing. Absolutely. I don't think it's changed on y'all's part whatsoever. No. It's it's an internal change okay. that has caused our our differences. And we have had some turnover. You all have had some turnover in that position. And so I completely understand that. And I sympathize with you all. We've had turnover at the department as well in areas. Um, I've, since I've been in this role three years, I'm on my third one, one of my branch managers. It's my third one. You know, um, <coughs> because it's a lot of work. You know, and what you all do here is not easy. You all are operating as a school slash state government agency. Thanks for acknowledging that. And that's difficult to do. So we're trying to, very, we are walking that fine line because some things we're going to say to you, do it like a school district does it, and some things we're going to say to you, mm, sorry, it's your state government, so you have to, you know, you have to fill out form A, B, C, D, E, and F. So, so the student activity or the local funds, I think we need to get a better understanding of those and what they're for. Um, because if there's money there that can benefit, that was originally collected to benefit areas of the school, we need to budget those monies and we need to spend it. Okay? So, so that, that, that fund is why we have Marshall and Kelly. Because if you're a school district, you use Red Book, right? Red Book references your local board approval a lot. You all have a local board. You know, Frankfurt's your local board. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, what we did a couple of years ago, is we took a lot of those Red Book forms and we, re we changed them to be KSD and KSB specific so that you all could use them. You know, if you collect money, you need to be able to write out who paid you and turn it in. And everything we're talking about is for everybody in this room's protection. Not that we want to know what you're doing, but to protect each of you. Because when you start talking about money, you know, you could be, you could be operating in the absolute best frame of mind. It's going to be the best thing for the kids. I'm doing this. I'm so excited. But it may not be perceived that way from somebody on the outside. We want to take you all out. You don't need to deal with that. You need to deal with the children in your classroom. So, so we've got a lot of things to do. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. Zach is a, is a valuable, he, he's been with us at the department, gosh, I don't know how long. Three years in our special education early learning office. Um, he's, he's a gem. Um, and he's going to help us get these processes in place so that you all know what you need to do. You do it. And then you leave it. And he's going to order your stuff. He's going to make sure your stuff gets received. Wow. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So 
are supposed to be from this point on we're going to follow them and we're no longer going to have to be running to 18 different websites to order this and order that and order this and get the pro card and we're not going to be procurement folks anymore. I want to speak on that but if you submit a DPR it is my preference that you provide me with a quote from a website. I do not want to have to go look through your vendors and provide, well, I mean, for instance, preschool just had some things, we had a little discrepancy on an order. I don't want to contact the vendor and them ask me, well, what does Laura want? Well, I don't really know what Laura wants. I'm not a preschool teacher. We can get quotes. Correct. So the only thing that I need on your DPRs when you submit them is a justification for why we're spending the funds, how much it's going to cost, an itemized list, and then a quote. If you provide those documents to me, I will do the rest of it to get your order processed. Yeah, because in the past, it's been coming back to us to actually place the order. I get it. That will not happen. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, because we have recently just had some discrepancies. Because in the past, when I have placed an order and I upload my quote onto our DPR, like, Previously, I have been able to use even just a screenshot of the items that I want from the website and put in our link, because our DPR actual system is, is fabulous. Lovely. Like, it's lovely. It works wonderfully. Um, we just don't know where those funds come from or what we're supposed to click, how they're allocated, and okay. what happens after that. Okay. And so, like, I had no idea that I needed to contact that vendor and get an actual quote from them because if it doesn't generate, like, because before I could just put that itemized list and that was accepted as a quote. So, like, we we have worked that out. I've actually, I've got a meeting with her on Tuesday and it'll all be all cleared up when we can go. But, um, so that was just kind of where some of that confusion, I think, came from. Like, once we had our beautiful system and everything submitted, we had no idea where it was going. I'll just a, a little elaborate on what she's speaking on. We had a situation where she provided me a quote. The quote was for five items. Those items were straight from a website. I want you all to understand that when you order from a website, that is just like me or Karen logging into a website and we're looking for those items. You all are a school district. So oftentimes, if you reach out to a specific vendor and want to order something, there is a different catalog that you will order from. In her case, we ended up saving money on those specific items. However, when she went through the catalog, they found additional items that would be beneficial to your class, correct? Yes. So what I say to you all is be cautious about going straight to a website and just pulling up a cart and saying, I want one, two, three, four. Think about the vendor that you're using. Now, Lowe's might be just the same. Go to Lowe's. I already know what I want from Lowe's. That's fine. But when we're using a specific vendor, like for her, she needed preschool supplies. Can you tell me who that vendor was again? Touch Math? Uh, touch Math, yes. So Touch Math. They, they have a separate catalog for regular citizens off the street versus a school district. They were able to provide her with more details, more information, things that are more usable in a classroom versus being used at home. So I, I say just be cognizant of where you're ordering from those vendors. And think about, well, if I reached out to this vendor, is there a chance that they may have a broader catalog that may have these items available to me that I'm not seeing on the website? Or if I'm seeing them on the website, are they cheaper through a catalog that they have available to us? I want you all to think about that when you're submitting your DPR. I'm, oftentimes, I feel like I see some of these that we're, we're trying to get them into the system so quick because we really need these things urgent. We need them urgently. But if we don't take the time to put in the details and specify the items that we need, we're actually slowing ourselves down because what's going to happen is I'm going to email Laura and say, Laura, your quote did not match. They don't have the items that you requested for. I need you to now contact the vendor. So we went through a couple, two to three extra days there. And I'm picking on her right now yeah, because we're, all, we're getting worked out. So I'm picking on her. We got it. I want you all just to think about how can I save those two or three days? Because a lot of times when you're working in the school, things need to happen like right now. And that's just the way it is. And I get that. So let's think about when we submit the DPR, let's get all of the information we need at one time so that when it's in that system, I can move forward, I can get that process, I can get it ordered for you, and it can be here in the next day or two days. Fair? Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
Does that make sense to everyone? Do we have questions, Jerry? Is there a system for unbogging down the ones that have been stuck for six months I or more? I am tearing through, me and Cher are tearing through that DPR system as best as I can. Okay. I've worked with Eddie a few times on some DPRs that are pretty far up there on that list. I'm not sure why they haven't been taken care of yet. I promise you it is my goal to go through that entire DPR list. I can't tell you it's going to be done next week. I can't tell you it'll be done in two weeks. I would love for it to be done today, but it's not going to be. So bear with me. I'm going to work through all of your DPRs that are in there. Please don't think you can't submit anymore because we're working through old ones. Get the things that you need. Put those DPRs in. Let's let us work through them. We're going to catch up from the top all the way down, but we will get the things that are necessary and the things we need ASAP. Okay? Okay, so ideally, how long from the time that we put a request in should we expect to be able for it to be ordered, like from from start to finish, from when we put in a request to when it's ordered? What is what would be that expected time frame? Well, you know, depending on what Zach's workload is that particular day, whenever he receives it, um, he may not be able to input it into KDE's DPR until the next day. Um, but Terry's staff are the next ones that get it, right? It goes to it goes to Shannon probably first, who I know is looking at those on a daily basis. Um, then it's going to go to Greta, who is your associate commissioner, Office of Special Education Early Learning, and we we constantly and she has she has um, designated people. We we'll de yeah, we're we're constantly watching that. Then it goes to Terry. Terry's group they they don't they. A, a DPR does not lie in Terry's inbox, I can tell you, for longer than a day. They do the budget approval. They basically say, this has money, okay, and then it moves on into either A&F, county finance, or it moves to, to procurement. Uh, two days? Really? Wow. Uh, and the reason I ask, because the reason that... I'm, I'm pretty sure that I can speak for everyone when I say the reason that you've seen people buying things out of pocket is because we can't wait 90 days, and that's the minimum. It's been 90 days minimum. That's I mean, ridiculous. There are, I, 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 between technology alone, I say we probably have spent three to $5,000 in the past okay. of, of our own money to keep this place running you can't. just because you stop. we have to have something because we, 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 we have the mechanisms to do that for you. There is no reason that you should be spending the money out of your pocket. Because then what happens, what if you do that and it's something that's over our small purchase limit? Then you call file for reimbursement. We can't reimburse you because it should have been procured a different way. Then we're asking for forgiveness instead of permission. Oh, we're not... Most of us don't we're, not, we're not trying for reimbursement. That's just it's a donation to KC. Yes. Yeah. If there's a yeah. Sometimes if it, it sometimes if it goes. <laughs> She said that sometimes when there's SPR ones that are involved in these documents, so in Jared's question was, in my eyes, was just a simple purchase, two days, we can get that thing done. But in the event that we have a large order, we have to have SPR ones, we have to have any of it has to be approved by finding. So maybe that one takes four to five days. Maybe and that that's all software, I believe. All it's software. All technology. Well, we were told any, any technology purchase, but it's... Uh, any purchase over a thousand dollars in any software. Okay. And Raven, like I said, will be here next week, and she can talk more about the procurement part of it. How many of you all make single purchases over a thousand dollars typically? All the you talking about school year? Uh, I'm talking about one purchase. Oh, no, no. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Does like assessment material? Yeah, evaluation team that would be a, a, a purchase from a single vendor, but it would be several things on there through that DPR system. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, one item on the DPR or ten items. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna submit a approval and send it on back to Jared, and then he can place the order. Now, maybe five of the items are out of stock or there's a back order or something like that, but he's going to order everything as it comes back to him. 
Now, there's some really standard master agreements, like Lowe's has a master agreement. Uh, what else for the you are not You are not responsible for that information. If you all need to make a purchase, it is your job. Really you submit to DPR, put the information yeah. is. We will find out where that money goes to, who are we paying it from. If it's on MA, if it's not on MA, if they need a vendor number, then we'll give them a vendor number. So here's the deal. You all don't have access to EMARS because we don't want you to have access to EMARS because you don't need access to EMARS. That's how you find out who's on master agreement. You wouldn't know that. So so we've, been, we've been given a spreadsheet of all the current master agreements, and it's okay. on us to find out who they are. Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm asking because that's why I was told to order certain okay. things or to that Yeah. Well, I mean, and if you have that information and you're okay with using that vendor and you know that it's on a master agreement. It's so confusing. It's so I'm saying for you, because you're talking about like Office 360. I'm sorry. Probably. I'm sorry. Is that what you're thinking of? Most of your office supplies. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Place. It's mostly for the audience. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I repeat just to help me and I think it'll help you too? So what you are saying is we are not responsible for finding out who is and is not on that list. That is not a worry for us, correct? But that is no longer on our shoulders. Okay, next question. So like coaches, like I take our academic goal team, we travel. That money has came from a different pot of money every year I've coached since I've been here. So is that a today conversation or is that a next week conversation? I don't know, we mean every, a different pot of money every time. So one year it would come from these mysterious local funds and then another year it came from, oh, you have a student activity account. I'm like that's brand new information. Those are the same. And then, oh, they're the same. Local? Great. Local just means that it's the farmer's bank. Right. Okay, so I have been to this mysterious bank and gotten mysterious money out before. One year it was given to me as a check, and then one year it was like, oh, you have to go get the check. Every year has been different. So okay. Like, We're I'm, I'm racing because I'm trying to understand it. So if we could have, I know it would help my brain, just a list of like, here are the activities and the things that you want to accomplish for these kids. Mm -hmm. Who do you go to, and what do you do? So Like, yeah. that would be beautiful. Okay, if we could have it. Thank you. And that is something that um, Shannon and Zach and Terry Mason and I are going to talk about a little bit this afternoon if we have time. This is this to me and Shannon, uh, I, I know you agree, is probably the, the most beneficial because we're really learning. Yes. Um, so, but, but we are because we need a budget. <laughs> yeah, my hair's gonna be on fire, but my Frank. Um, next Friday I'm gonna be sick. No, now I don't know why Sheridan All of you all. No, I'm just joking. You all you all are, are charming. You're wonderful. I, I appreciate you not being, you know, no, you know, whatever. It's not ever gonna change. It's gonna change. Okay? This is a perfect opportunity for us. You have a new fiscal person. You have a new principal that's in place. It's a good opportunity for us to, and we do this all the time, guys. This is what school districts do. You get complacent. You get stuck in your ways. And then things happen, and it's just the way we always did it. Well, that's not the way that we're going to keep doing it. Okay? Hey, Jared. So, as directors, you, you said we need a budget. As directors, will we receive what our budget is? We're working on that. Okay. Yep. Let's say because I know. I don't know how you spend your money if you don't know how much money you have. We just oh, send it, okay. and if it gets rejected. And this later. is the exact same conversation we have with our offices at KDE. So you can't spend. You can't do what you're supposed to do if you don't know how much money you have. That's true. We run daily reports. Everybody can keep track. It's a system so simple that it even has a percentage at the top. So if you get to October 1st, which is the first day of the second quarter, and you look at your budget and you built in a little percentage and you spent 30%, you know, mm, I'm, I'm a little over for the year. It's simple. It's simple math. You start a year and you start deducting it out. Okay? You all have the hard part. <coughs> You all have the hardest part. I, I wouldn't even fathom doing what you all do. I have the utmost respect for every single one of you. I'm a bean counter. You know? <coughs> Processes live in my world. 
let us and him do that for you. Okay? Okay. Other questions, comments? Yes, sir. For many years now, people here at the school and other deaf individuals in the community have always talked about when KSD receives donations, like a check, mostly, you know, checks that are given that people in the community have written to Kentucky School for the Deaf or to KSD, just the initials, that it means that they're giving it, like if they want to give it to the middle school, that they had to write Kentucky, if they just wrote Kentucky School for the Deaf, then that money would be sent to Frankfurt and state government instead of given to KSD School for our students and uh, departments to use. So we've always said to make sure that when they write the check, write it to a specific organization that they want to give the money to. Is that true? And if they just write the initials KSD, does that mean that the money is taken to uh, state government and they do what they want with it and then the school never sees the money? Can you tell me if that's true? That's a great question. Hang on, wait until you can turn right so you can see the answer. That's a great question. So, so the misconception that if it goes to Frankfurt, it goes to state government and KSD doesn't get it is not a correct statement, okay? The money that if it were to come to EMARS, which is our state accounting system, we do what's called a CR, which is basically when you go to the bank and you fill out a deposit slip and you put that check in, that check goes into the accounting template for KSD. So then your balance goes up, right? If you keep it in Farmer's Bank because it says it's for the middle school, that's fine. We can live with that. But it needs to be spent, and it needs to be spent on students. If you receive a donation for students, you need to spend it on students. Don't save it to build something. We've got capital dollars for that. If you receive a donation and they say, I want this to go to the middle school students, then figure out a way for those middle school students to benefit. I don't know, what is it? A pizza party, a, a Taylor Bell's ice cream truck comes down. You know, but the students need to benefit from the money. And, and I'm, I'm so glad the gentleman said, does it go to state government? It does not. It goes to KSD. It just goes a different way. And instead of writing a check, it's more like virtual money. And I, and I think it's Shannon's intention to make sure that you have a starting balance of that virtual money so that you know how much you're spending. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question. I get phone calls sometimes of people that I Oh. Well, I know they look to us. So that I didn't even Oh, you can be, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry. You're out of my peripheral. I'm so sorry. So I'm just going to be honest. For a year now, I have asked. I deal with lots of behaviors. I have asked for things like impact cushions, bike sleeves, et cetera, et cetera, for safety for staff and students. I have went principal. I have went to several people, and I keep on getting told there's no money for that. So you're telling me that's not the case, that we can ask again for those things. Because I have been asking, and it is a safety concern, because we have, I think, two impact cushions for the whole elementary, and we're running back and forth to classrooms. Right. But we keep on getting told, well, there's no money for that, or that account, we don't have nothing left. Right. I, it, it, frustrating. Absolutely. Here's the thing. You all are a line item amount in the budget bill that the General Assembly passes every two years, okay? So in 2022, they passed what's called House Bill 1. House Bill 1 tells all state agencies how much money they're going to get. 
and that's money from the General Assembly. We call it general fund. So if you hear somebody say your general fund is X amount of dollars, that's money from the General Assembly. That's your virtual money. That's not Green and Karen's hand. Those, that's accounting templates attached to balances and EMARs. Okay? You all receive an actual line item number in a budget bill that tells how much money KSD gets. Okay? What happens is when Terry works with Zach now, she says, okay, you got this much money. Your personnel is going to cost this much. But when I say personnel, I mean salaries and fringe, anything that's salary and fringe related, anything with your professional services, interpreter, interpreting services, um, piano instructor, or any types of professional services that are through a contract that you all don't have a person here on campus that's doing it. All that comes out of personnel, comes out first, personnel first. What your balance is is what your operating is. What we then do when Terry goes through and allocates the money out is she says, how much money, Office A, do you need in operating? She gives them the amount, if it's allow allowable, that they need. And then it's that office's responsibility, like it will be with Shannon and Zach, to say, okay, outreach, you get this much money. Preschool, you get this much money. Um, IT, you get this much money. Now, if you want to order extra impact sleeves and all of that, that's fine. But it has to come out of the money that is assigned to your program. If you spend it all on that, then you know that you have to live through nothing for the rest of the year. I see, I'm just an assistant, but no matter who I ask, because we have lots of behaviors, no matter where I ask, it's, we have no money for that. This has been almost two years now of asking for things that would support yeah. Here at the elementary, we keep on getting told no. Yeah. And I know it's me and Christy Sharp and we would ask for some money. Yeah. It's just like, well, there's no money for that. And you know, if you can, you can swallow that a little bit better if you're seeing the numbers on paper mm -hmm. and you know that here's what I started with. I chose to do these expenditures and now I don't have enough money to take that trip I wanted to take. It's a little bit more palatable when you're managing your own pot. When you're just told there's no money, it's frustrating. And there may not be enough money for that. You know, it may be a, it may be a, a decision that you have to make based on your budget. But that is something that each and every one of you all needs to be responsible for. It needs to, it, you, you need to have a number and then you need to be able to budget it. Okay? Okay, so it sounds to me like we've talked a lot about general fund. We do have a little bit of federal fund here. It's mostly in the preschool area. You don't receive a lot of, of federal dollars. Um, so most, most of your money is coming from general fund. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, I use a lot of the IGA money. Okay. Is that, still, is that federal? That's federal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's spent the same way you do a DPR, comes through. And... Well, well, since you're looking at me and I'm talking. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've got about five DPRs, and this, this might be a private conversation. Okay. But uh, there's a few of them that have processed through like two places and then they're stuck. Okay. And some of them have not processed any place. Do you know if they're stuck here or stuck at the department? Well, I think half and half. Okay. But mm -hmm. now that my circumstances have changed, like I have no home here, I'm going to cancel several of those. <laughs> you, you may need to expand. I'm the deal teacher. Okay. Oh, that's right. Because the Apple Project. Sorry. Yeah. So I was ordering. I don't need it. But she was like, well, that's not going to be available until next month. And I can you send me an email with just those DPR numbers? I think so. And then I will mark those mm -hmm. as yeah. not needed. Because you I, said that you were processing, and I don't want you to order stuff and then it show up. And I, I, Just so we know, I will reach out to each one of you before I process any of the okay. orders, just so I can verify what we have in the DPR system. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Generally speaking, if you need to cancel a DPR, if you do so before it hits finance on that on the tracker, it'll cancel and it won't go any further. Yeah. Yeah. But That's once it saying. reaches the finance person and they put it into KDE, then you contact them. Because every time, each one that I pull up, it has the option to cancel it. 
Right. And I have not done that yet. But I will. Right. So if it's like if it's stuck at principal and you cancel it, it's not going to go any further. That's fine because it's in it's still in our system. Once it reaches the finance officer and they put it into KDE system, then you need to contact the I'll send officer. You an email. Okay. He's working so hard. We need to make sure he gets invited to the chili. <laughs> okay. Other questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, so I want to clarify. So I'm coach for the cheerleading team. So if we take things, for example, if we have students, and for example, a person gives me, what's it called, EMARS, gives me money, a list of a list of EMARS things, the agreement list. How, where to order shirts and stuff from. Okay, where should I order those things from? Okay, for cheerleading items. Well, adventure promotion is probably a good place to start. That's one of the T-shirts, etc. That type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So Cheyenne was suggesting a place to start with. But I've been a little bit confused because I've asked and people have been saying no, and I'm thinking. So I'm asking people if they want shirts and we might need like 50 t-shirts or whatever. So do they have to pay out of pocket for that or do we have to sign papers or how do I manage that money if people want to buy t-shirts from uh, to support our teams or whatever? Yeah, that's a maybe Marshall. Um, so, so they would purchase the t-shirts and then sell them? I just want to be careful. I feel like it's a little bit sticky. No, appreciate that. Because before we had advertisements, we would say if people want to design t-shirts or whatever, and if you want to buy, give your money to whatever, we would put it in a budget. But now, I feel like that exchange of money is a little bit sticky. You know, if it's money coming out of people's pockets and, you know, I don't want to have a problem over that. Is it coming from a local fund or where's, how do I handle that? Because, you know, I want to know that I'm doing it uh, the appropriate way and not going to have a problem with funding that we're getting from those t-shirts. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that is a, that is a Marshall Kelly question. Um, so, so do you all want to maybe talk with, is this Lisa? No. Samantha, Samantha. I'm sorry. Do you maybe want to, does anybody else have that type, same type of question? Sometimes? Why don't we, I'm, I'm about finished boring you all up here, so I'm going to let Marshall, we'll kind of go into some different topics. We'll let Marshall and Kelly maybe work with Samantha, and I'm sorry, well, I didn't get your name. Kimmy. Kimmy. And then you all can kind of explain your unique situation and we can figure out the best way to do it. Does that work? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So let me tell you what the next step is. First of all, I need a favor. I need y'all to be patient. Okay. This is going to take us a little bit of time to get everybody trained, right? And get everybody up to speed on how we're going to do things. All right. We have been, we've been hot and heavy on trying to to get invoices paid and people reimbursed. We are ready to start moving forward, right? So um, give us time. We will be back next Friday. I'm also going to bring, like I said, Raven Miller. She's our procurement person. She can talk to you about um, professional services. Um, she can talk to you about small purchase limits, all of that. Things that it's not a bad idea if you hear it, but I don't want you to feel like you have to own it. Because he's going to own it, right? Because he's not going to be a procurement expert either, but he's going to know who the department to talk to. Okay? Because that's going to be his role. Okay? So I'm asking for your patience. And I'm asking for you guys. My name is W-I-R-T-H. Karen.Worth at education.ky.gov. I'm asking for you all to reach out to me. If you have problems, if you have questions, that's why we're here. 
Okay, so we'll be back next Friday. Monica, this is a travel voucher. I don't know if a lot of you travel since it's not a lot of outreach people, but this is a travel voucher. Monica is here today if anybody has specific questions about travel in state and out of state. So if you've got a group that you're wanting to take an out of state trip, you can talk to her about that. She'll also be back next Friday. So if you have friends in the, in the school that you know they travel a lot, tell them to tune in next Friday because she'll be here to do that. Um, what else? Marshall, of course, student activity. Sounds like um, there's not a lot of people here. And maybe it's that student activity local piece of it that we need to kind of figure out. Yeah. But we've got to identify the funds that are set up in that student activity account and identify who they belong to. Okay. I'm going to stop. Any other questions? You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the major point here is we don't want anybody spending money out of their pocket. So please, moving forward, if you have something that needs to be bought tomorrow, don't ask me because I can't help you. I'm running home after this. But next week, if you need something that needs to be purchased, please come to me first. Let's see if I can find a workaround before you go swipe your own debit card or credit card. Yeah. And you know, it may get to that point. If you have a budget, you spend it all, you want something, you may have to. I mean, we all know that happens every day on day for every classroom teacher across the whole state. So it may come to that. But, you know, let's explore um, the school's ability to provide that for you before you just go and do it because that's the only way you'll get it. Okay? It's really, really nice to see you all. Yes, ma'am. I just have a quick question. I know you said to like email and reach out. Um, if someone has a particular financing thing they're reaching out about, whom do we need to include on that email? Like, does that also need to include Shannon or Dr. Petrie? Or like, I mean, I think that if you have a question, I think that, if, and Shannon definitely needs to jump in here, but I think that go to Zach. He should be your first contact as far as a fiscal question. And I'm assuming you're thinking, mm, I think I want to buy this. I have the money to buy it on my budget. I don't really know who I need to buy it from. You know, I need it by this date. He can help you with those answers. If it becomes more philosophical, <laughs> do I need to buy this? Does this look bad? Do I need it? You know, is this a bad thing? Then you need to elevate it to Shannon. But, but Zach will help you with that. He'll help you with that. I will just say, I recommend everyone reach out to me first. I have pretty good communication with Shannon. Sometimes she don't text me back. <laughs> it's hard for Shannon. It's hard. I'll call her if I have to. So I can get a hold of Shannon. I'm also really good communication. We communicate really well with Greta. So I can call her right now. She'll pick up the phone probably right here on the meeting. We're not going to put her on the spot, though. I promise. We're not going to do that. Uh, a sense of little hesitancy, like maybe it's something well, that... Well, the whole reason that we ended up with a can we do the mic? secondary DPR system is uh -huh. because some things were getting sent directly and administrators at the time were being bypassed and frustrated and, um, you know, who catches heat when that happens? Uh -huh. <laughs> People are trying to order stuff, too. I so gotcha. We're I just gotcha. trying to make sure that we're following, you know, and yep. being transparent. Yeah. Use your, use your internal DPR system that Jared built. We've seen it at the department. It looks great. But I then think, we I have think to that if you're going to reach out to anyone at KDE, definitely copy Shannon on the email just so that she's aware of the chain of the email. So if she has questions, she can follow back there. She might not have the answer for you, but she'll at least want to track and figure out what we're trying to do. Would you agree to that, Shannon? Yes, and Lynn. And Lynn, yes. and the principal, principal be true, obviously, yes. Does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Is anybody anybody interested in learning how to fill that out? Because if you are, you're welcome to stay with Monica, yes? Okay. Monica, uh, Kimmy would like to talk through the travel voucher. Um, anybody, I know we've got Kimmy and, and Samantha that are going to talk to Marshall and Kelly. Um, what? Any other questions that that you have? We're going to be here for a while. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Like I also answer the phone. Me and Christy do. We answer uh -huh. the main line. 
<laughs> so I'm one of the secretaries, but I also am the operator, I guess, between Christy and I. We answer calls and calls, and people will ask who to transfer to the finance office. Where should uh -huh. we direct those calls when people call in? Um, they need to go to Zach. I'm What's in, your I'm extension? In, I'm in Betsy's office. So if anybody has Betsy's that extension, office, so I, I can use can that extension that, that yes. time. Yes, I'm in Betsy Smith's old office for the time being. Okay. So that phone shouldn't work. Yeah, the the extension works. Um, I'll change the name to make it your name. Yeah. And then I have one more question. Also, okay. I've gotten calls about donations. When Byron was speaking of that earlier, people will ask me who they need to write a check out to if they just want to come to the school. Okay. In general, they didn't really have any specifics of what to use. They just wanted to give it to the school. Okay. So who specific? How should they write those checks? Out? You know, if some if somebody wants to donate money to the school, it needs to come to EMARS. It needs to come into EMARS. It needs to go into an account. But how, how, how okay. do they, they can write, just, what do you mean by that? They can, write, um, they can write it out to the Kentucky State Treasurer, and in the, in the memo line, they can say KSD. Now, if they want to send money for some type of, uh, like a cochlear device or something, they need to note that on the memo so that then we can monitor, we have, you, in EMARS, there is a KSD donations fund that we can put those monies in. I know at one time, then you all used to get like WHAS, like money for Crusade and. Okay, okay. So I was thinking that some of that money was in our, one of our restricted accounts. So yeah, there's there's um, that unless it's unless you're going to get a check for Johnny Smith. And then you're going to turn around and buy something for Johnny Smith. It needs to come to Franklin. And it needs to be made out to Kentucky State Treasurer. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> but with KSD in the memo lines. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you have to make sure you put KSD, reference KSD. Okay. All right, if no other questions, um, Terry and I are going to kind of talk budget with Shannon and Zach, if we can still do it for a little bit. But we'll be here close if you have any questions for us, um, or just want to talk, or just, you know, whatever. Marshall and Kelly can talk to Kimmy and Samantha. Thank you all. Zach Whitaker is his name. Do you have his? Yeah, there. Is he in our system?